Hello YouTubes, my name is Chantelle and welcome to the channel where we talk about everything marine biology. Now for those who have been following my journey for a while will know that in November I handed in my PhD thesis which was really an awesome milestone to achieve. But along with reaching that milestone, my scholarship came to an end and everybody got bills to pay so ever since then I have been on the job hunt. And I'm not going to lie to you, finding a job as a marine biologist can be particularly difficult. It's very competitive, there's a lot of other people who want to be marine biologists, funding is very limited and this is a problem with science in general, and the staff turnover rate can be really slow, particularly at universities. Once somebody becomes a professor, they'll generally stay there until retirement. So getting your foot into that door can be really, really difficult. And because these permanent positions are hard to come across, oftentimes as a marine biologist, you will need to do a whole bunch of short-term short contract positions until you can find something more, more permanent. So for me, I just got my first short-term contract position as a marine biologist. I'm really, really excited. Um, so for today's video, I thought I would share a little bit about my experience of job hunting as a marine biologist and maybe give some advice to others out there who are interested in becoming marine biologists. So first thing is first, what type of job can you get as a marine biologist? Well, this is incredibly varied and I have spoken a little bit about this in some of my prior videos, but briefly there are a couple of different paths that you can take as a marine biologist. So generally, once you have completed your PhD, the next logical step is to do something called a postdoc or a postdoctoral position. And this is at a university and it's kind of the stepping stone between your studies and becoming a junior professor at that university or a different university. So essentially you work under a, an advisor, you do your own independent research, you publish papers and a lot of PhD students take this step because they want to work at universities. But this doesn't have to be the case. You don't have to work for a university. You could work for the government and you could be something like a marine scientist or a research officer for the government and collect data and do research for the government. Or you could work at an aquarium. You could be an aquaculturist. You could look after the animals. You could grow corals, all types of things. And another path is that you could work for private research stations. And this most often takes the form of being a manager of that research station. So you will manage the research, manage the people, the staff, the volunteers, all that kind of thing. And each of these jobs are quite different and require a unique skill set. So as a marine biologist, you kind of need to decide what sort of direction you want to go in. So you can develop the set of skills that you will need for each of these different job trajectories. Now, one of the most difficult things can actually be finding these jobs. How do you look for a job that you are interested in applying for? Now, again, there are many different tools and resources that you can use, but one of my favorite resources is that of mailing lists. Now, at your university, you will be signed up to a million and one different emailing lists. The vast majority of these emails will be a complete waste of time, but that's okay because in between all of these emails, there will be some really useful ones. And oftentimes they will advertise the latest job postings that have just become available online. And so this is a really efficient way to keep track of all of the new job postings that become available. Uh, not only that, networking is incredibly important. In science and in any other career path, who you know can be very, very important. And it's the same in marine biology. So networking and putting yourself out there and talking to people is a very useful thing to do. Talk to your professor, your supervisor, other people at your university, other professors at different universities, when you go to conferences, meet people, network, and really just get your name out there. You can also do like online searches through Google and things. I haven't quite really figured out how to do this in a useful manner. Um, you know, you type in a marine biology job or something that is more specific that you're looking for, but I still haven't quite figured out the best search terms to look for jobs that are applicable to me. I don't know, maybe somebody with more search engine experience would be able to do so. So for me, keeping on top of the mailing lists, networking with people is probably the best way to find a job that you would like to apply for. 
Next step is the application process. You found your dream job. This is the job you want to apply for. So what's next? Well, most obviously you need your resume or your CV. It needs to be up to date and it needs to be really professional looking. I spent quite a lot of time making sure that my CV looked really good. Now, an academic CV is quite different to a normal business CV. It includes a lot of extra things like the scientific papers that you've published, the grants and funds that you've managed to obtain, etc. So it is worthwhile just Googling what information you need to include into an academic CV and just making sure your CV looks really good and contains all of the necessary information. Then my personal worst experience with job applications is the cover letter. Every single application will need some sort of cover letter and every for every application you'll need to write a different one because it needs to be really specific and tailored to the job that you are applying for and crafting the perfect cover letter is kind of like an art form. It can be really difficult, there's no right or wrong way to do it but there are a few general rules that I like to follow. So I like to keep mine maximum length one page, you know, it needs to be short, punchy, to the point, it needs to be in a proper letter format, it needs to have sort of the date and the correct addresses, etc. So make sure that the format is correct. Then what do you put into your cover letter? Um, as I said, this varies. Generally, the main aim of a cover letter is to highlight the set of skills that you know the employees are looking for. So you go through the job application, you see exactly what skills they're looking for, and these you list out in your cover letter. And you say, um, I have this skill set because I have experience doing this. And I see you're looking for this type of person and I match that. I'm really suited to this position because of X, Y, Z. So back onto the track for finding a job. You have found the job you want to apply for, you've sent in your tailored cover letter and CV, and they have replied to you and requested an interview. This is a really exciting and a really important stage in the whole application process. And while most interview situations happen pretty much on the fly, you have to think of answers on the spot, there are a few things that you can do to prepare for these interviews. So first of all, and probably the most important, is to do your homework and make sure you understand what the institute is about that you are applying to for this job. So some institutes will be very much research focused on very specific things. Some institutes will be more community driven or fisheries driven or volunteer driven. Um, so do your homework, find their web page and see what this institute is about. What is their main aims and goals that they are trying to accomplish? And then you can prepare some of the answers to some of the most common questions that they might ask. So for example, oftentimes they will ask personal questions, so be prepared to answer some things about your personal life. They might uh, ask you questions like, why do you think you are most suited to the job? Why do you want the job? What do you think some of your weaknesses are? Um, and so you can prepare some of the answers to those types of questions. And really, that's about as much prep as you can do. Go into the interview looking good, looking professional, but just be yourself, be as honest as possible. And as I said, that's about as much as you can do. And then you just gotta hope and pray and wait that they will choose you amongst the million and one other applications that they probably received. So my final piece of advice to wrap up this video is to just be as persistent as possible. Like I said, this is a very competitive field. You are probably going to have to send in hundreds of applications, attend many different interviews, but just be persistent. Eventually you will get something. And even if the pay might not be great or it might be in a different place, so you're gonna to have to move or it might not be exactly the job spec that you wanted, you know, try and grab every opportunity that comes your way so you can build up your CV, build up your skills, and eventually you can find the perfect dream job that you want. Um, so yeah, that's it for this video. Uh, as per usual, any questions, comments, leave them down below. If you are a marine biologist and you have any other tips and uh, pieces of advice, please leave them down below for me and for any other marine biologist out there. And until next time, I hope you all have a very happy day. And if you are looking for a job, I wish you the best of luck.